ValveTime.net. Hi, and welcome to another Valve Time Review. In this episode, we'll be reviewing the long-awaited recreation of the classic Half-Life mod, Natural Selection 2. Natural Selection 1 was first released on October 31st, 2002 as a Half-Life mod and was developed upon for years after. In 2006, Unknown Worlds was founded and work on Natural Selection 2 for the Source Engine started. It wasn't until November of 2009 that the pre-alpha, running on a custom engine entitled Spark, was released. It has been patched and under development since then and is now set to release on October 31st, 2012, the 10 year anniversary of the release of NS1. What did we think of this ambitious project? Did the developers bite off more than they could chew, or has this classic mod evolved and adapted to survive? Let's find out. Gameplay On first playing NS2, many players may be scared away by the somewhat twitchy gunplay or the RTS FPS hybrid systems. But those who stay will be rewarded immensely. Simply put, the game is fun as hell. Winning a game relies heavily on a team's cooperation and communication with one another. Working with your teammates to eventually overcome the other team can take over half an hour, but the feeling achieved for a victory is hard to match. Natural Selection 2 pits the Space Marines, known as Frontiersmen, against the alien race Kara in a battle for control of the map. Both teams are led by a commander who plays with a top-down RTS view and issues orders to the players, who play from a first-person perspective. The main goal of the game is to kill the other team, of course, but with that comes the core of the game. Littered throughout each map are resource nodes, little holes in the ground that give resource points to the team that builds a structure on top that can collect them. Games will start out with players spawning as the grunt of each team, the marines and skulks respectively. From there, anyone who wishes to is able to jump into the commander role who issues orders and drops buildings for construction. The command role is best left for those with an extremely deep knowledge of the game, so we wouldn't recommend jumping into the chair from the get-go. The frontiersmen spend their resource points on upgrade buildings such as arms labs for different weapons, a prototype lab for jetpacks and exosuits, or a robotics factory for siege units. Different weapons available for purchase include a shotgun, grenade launcher, and flamethrower. All of the tech paths in the game are viable, and you will rarely see everything in a single game. Aliens evolve instead of requiring new weapons, and their available evolutions include traits or entirely new classes. This mechanic provides a similar experience to Team Fortress 2, meaning the variety of classes and their different playstyles keep things from getting stale for the player. The Skulk is the basic main class for the Kara and resembles the little alien dogs. Their attacks include a simple bite and a ranged ability called Parasite, which allows you to track marines throughout the map. Also available are Gorges, which have a healing spray as well as a ranged attack and can help build defensive structures. The Lurk is another unit for the aliens that has a very unique playstyle about it. Instead of requiring close quarters to fight, Lurks can also shoot spikes from a distance and lay down green clouds called Spores, which damages marines standing in its vicinity. Fades are the next life form and a fan favorite for its mobility and damage dealing capabilities. Visually similar to the Vortigaunt from the Half-Life series, the Fade is able to go in and out of battle quickly with two separate blink abilities and is very important in the late game. The last and biggest Corral life form is the Onos, a big rhinoceros looking alien that takes up entire hallways to navigate through. Easily the strongest class in the game, they have a stomp ability that stuns all enemy units in front of them and a separate melee attack for both players and buildings. The Onos is the ultimate endgame unit that costs much more resource points than any other class and requires nearly a full squad of marines firing upon it to die. While all the alien species are fun in their own way, we thought the Fade stood out as the most enjoyable. Blinking around a group of marines in a dimly lit room, slowly picking them off one by one is an exhilarating experience, similar to playing the spy in TF2 or the hidden in the hidden source. Like the original, a bad commander or a few sour teammates can completely ruin a game, and it's not very hard to grief. Yes, players can eject out a bad commander, but even a couple minutes of having a useless commander can lose a game. They are required to build the correct tech paths, drop ammo and med packs on the map when needed, and make crucial game decisions on the fly. Unlike other RTS games, the units he gives orders to won't always obey or react well, which good commanders will take into account. Presentation One of our favorite aspects of Natural Selection 2 were the levels. Games are played out in abandoned space stations, mining shafts, docking bays, and other similar and inventive locales. Cramped and tight corridors lead to vast expanses that make perfect arenas to fight in. The visual details, such as a busted water pipe or a chewed vent cover, mesh perfectly with the environments. The lighting and ambient effects make each area feel truly real, as if they happen to actually exist. The most apt description would be indoor environments of aliens with a dash of StarCraft. Each sector of the maps are lit by power nodes, which also supply power to frontiersmen buildings. 
The Kara can take out these power nodes and cut power to its subsequent area, which instantly turns a once safe room into a claustrophobic and dangerous situation. On top of this, the Kara have a dynamic infestation, a green and yellow living mass that slowly takes over areas unless combated. These features all work well at making each map and round feel different every time and look fantastic in the process. The visuals are top notch, and the brand new Spark engine is shown off to great effect. While many of the maps share a general aesthetic, they differ in both color palette and setting. Yes, there are a number of current metal corridors, but there are huge cliff expanses, a refinery flowing with lava, or even a space mall with its own food court that set each other apart. Ambient sounds, such as a dripping pipe or scratching metal, make for even more atmospheric experience as they could both be mistaken for the sound of scuttling skulk feet. Combat itself is Twitch-based, so any sort of lag or jankiness would really hinder gameplay, and thankfully that's not the case. The game feels great. Shooting and moving about with any class is very smooth and natural. Both races and their various classes have a bit of a learning curve when it comes to combat. For instance, the Skulk is an extremely fast creature and requires very close range to attack with. That coupled with the unconventional perspective of the in-mouth camera makes for some getting used to. Performance. One slight problem we have encountered with NS2 are the load times. Initially, loading into a server can take up to a minute or two, which is pretty bad when compared to other modern PC titles. The game itself ran very well on several low to high end gaming PCs at a solid average of 50 to 60 frames per second for the majority of gameplay. Another issue is the third person camera, which is regularly slightly too zoomed out, which often clips through the walls and into the skybox, creating a lot of confusion for anybody attempting to watch their teammates' actions. It must also be said that these issues are easily patched, and if the history of NS2 is anything to look at, will most likely be addressed in the near future. Conclusion It's easy for us to say that Natural Selection 2 not only lives up to its predecessor, but surpasses it. The gameplay changes added on top of the new engine make it attractive for an entirely new crowd, and we wouldn't be surprised for it to skyrocket into popularity. It could also be said that the game we're currently playing will almost certainly serve as a starting off point for what it could be in the future. Considering the release of NS2 was largely funded by its pre-orders, it's a safe bet that Unknown Worlds will be supporting it for quite a while. Steam Workshop support and a what-you-see-is-what-you-get editor make the future look bright for NS2. For gameplay and presentation, we give it an A, as those two couple into a very fun and interesting experience. Performance gets a B, but it must be remembered that what are performance issues now will be patched and forgotten about down the road. Overall, the game receives an A- for its varied and rewarding gameplay and well-designed environments which balance visuals and clever level design in an interesting manner. The developers should be proud of themselves for taking such a loved mod concept and advancing it all the way towards completing a fully-fledged high-quality multiplayer experience. That brings us to the end of another Valve Time review. To celebrate the release, we're going to be giving away two copies of Natural Selection to a pair of lucky viewers. We're going to keep with the theme of evolution because running themes are cool. All you have to do to win is leave a message in the comments below on YouTube or ValveTime.net telling us how you would improve an existing Valve creature by combining it with literally anything from a Valve title. Then explain how the resulting creature would benefit from their new additions. It can be another creature, a weapon, several weapons, items, people, anything you want. Yes, even buildings, I guess. But remember, making something really complicated doesn't necessarily make it good. Simplicity is also nice. Our artist John will then attempt to create your creature through the magic of Photoshop and will show the top two comments and resulting images on this week's Valve Time News Roundup, which is set to air on Saturday the 3rd of November 2012 alongside our Metro 2033 giveaway winner. If you want to enter the competition to win a copy of Metro 2033, head over to the first episode of Valve Time Top 5 at the annotation link on screen now to get all the details. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit our website to get involved with the community. Stay tuned for more Valve Time videos, news, and reviews coming soon. Bye for now.